The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. <laughs> Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm your host, Patrick Cristiano, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs in New York City and the Hamptons. We cover Broadway and off-Broadway openings, as well as the social scene out here and happenings in New York. And today we're coming to you from the LTV studio in East Hampton, where I have a really special guest, Kimberly <laughs> Goff, who is an artist, a curator. She's my friend for many years. And she is also the daughter of Elaine Benson, who was a well-known artist out here, too. And art dealer. Art dealer, uh, entrepreneur, let's call your mother. She uh, was called the doyenne of art in the Camden. The where was it? Doyenne oh, of yes. art in Hampton. <laughs> so it was a great quote. Yeah, and she, she had the first gallery out here, and they had the first center for, for arts in Bridgehampton. She and her second husband, Emmanuel Benson, came in 1965, found a lot of artists. They had come from Philadelphia. He was the dean of the Philadelphia Museum College of Art, and she was his uh, PR director. And they found that there was no gathering place for the artists, so they established one. And it was a dynamite place that your mother created. It was really special with the garden So in the much middle. fun. Yes. <laughs> How long was she there? She died in 1998, and I had become her co-director in 1993. I closed the gallery in 2006. And she opened it in what year? 1965. So from 65 to? 2006. Wow. Good long run. That's a good long run. It, it, was, it was a real, and she was also on the board here at LTV, and she was a producer? She was. She was in from, the, from day one when Frances Ann and Fraser Doherty had the concept. She was very much part of it and she stayed on the board till she died. She was quite an extraordinary woman, your mother. She yeah. was the best. <laughs> <laughs> she was just such fun. And, it's, it's, and we had her memorial here. It was, this oh, was wow. very much a part of her life. Oh, wow. She had done a memorial for my stepfather, Emmanuel. Uh, no, sorry, for Joe Kaufman, her third husband. Uh, she was widowed twice, and she said to me after that, she said, I want exactly the same memorial. She knew that she was ill, and she said, what I did for Joe, I want you to do for me. And I did it to the letter. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so so you, you're, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, apparently. There's something about her voice that when she and I were together a lot, I had her voice and I just heard it again. There are times when I'm either speaking through a microphone or speaking about her that I can hear her voice, which is great fun. Do you feel like that happens to you more since she's gone? No, it happened more when she was alive. Really? There was a time when her brother and my, my late husband both uh, could not tell us apart, called on the phone and had no idea. And she was once listening to something that we had been, we'd done on television, perhaps for LTV, and she said she turned her back and she couldn't tell where her voice ended and mine began, <laughs> which was really special. <laughs> that was so much fun. <laughs> Since I had enormous respect for Do you for remember her. what year that was? <laughs> no idea, but it was fairly close to the end of her life. Oh, okay. So it might have been around 96. So you morphed into each other. We spent a lot of time together in the mm. gallery. And then because she was ill, she, would, she didn't want anyone to know. So she would ask me to drive her to anything that she oh. was doing. And uh, we went out together almost every night. And we had tons of things to say to each other. So even if we'd been together all day, Four hours later, we'd speak on the phone and we'd be excited about what we had to tell each other. It was great uh, fun. Are you an only child? No, I'm one of four. I'm the youngest. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? I'm the baby. And, and the others are not immersed in the art scene? Uh, my brother Bill worked with her in the 70s when Emmanuel Benson was mm -hmm. dying. And so she needed his help and he came. And that started his career in the arts. He started an, a sports art gallery after he left her. Oh, wow. So. Yeah. But, so you, so you were, but you, you started painting right away, or you didn't start how, how, Tell me about your evolution. How did it happen? <laughs> I started painting right away, but because she worked with so many artists, she said that she felt that it was not a good idea for me to become an artist. She said there were enough artists. <laughs> so she discouraged me from going into the arts, and I studied fashion design, opened a boutique in Bridgehampton in 1974 when I was 19 years old that was directly up the block from the gallery, and people would often walk back and forth. So there were times when 
Elaine de Kooning would stop in and she'd go to the gallery or come back to me or they often parked at the gallery, would walk uptown, come to my store oh. and then go back to her and report. Truman Capote once did that and went back and said, you have the most extraordinary daughter. <laughs> <laughs> she got a kick out of it. We both did. So, so I you couldn't go Truman very too. far. Oh, absolutely. In fact, when she wrote an obit for Truman, she mentioned this little story that he had complimented me, and she was so proud of it. You know I played Truman Capote. Did you know that? I think I remember that, <laughs> because I'm, now that I, I'm hearing the voice that you had when yes, you were Yes, it was really up like this. You were great. <laughs> I, I did it in Jacksonville, Florida for three weeks, that wonderful play called True that Jay Press and Allen wrote, who wrote the Prime of Miss Jean Brody. It was really cool. But let's not digress on, on my true. Well, I don't know. Stuff. It's fun to talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so, should we, let's look at some of your artwork. Okay, that would be great. Yeah, let, let, let's do that. Can we, uh, we have some? What is this? Well, obviously, with abstract painting, I shouldn't tell you exactly what it is. Okay. But what it evokes My for me is what I really. Uh, <laughs> I didn't name it. Oh, okay. And one of the things I do on Facebook is to put up some of my paintings and ask people to name them. I don't like literal names because it tells people too much what they're seeing. I'd mm -hmm. rather people bring something to the work. Mm -hmm. Which is part of the idea of doing abstract work is right. that everybody sees what they see. But that one certainly evokes the sea for me. It. Um, well, this is a segue into something we were talking about. I live part of the year in, in Baja, Me California, Sur. And so that's uh, in Mexico. There are two states in Baja that are part of Mexico, <coughs> Baja Norte and Baja Sur. And I've been there for 40 winters. Wow. The fact that I owned a boutique in Bridgehampton and that I, I worked seven days a week meant that when the summer was over, I truly wanted to get off and have some time by the ocean and to relax. and. So I went down there with my first husband, and uh, we went to Cabo San Lucas when the road was first opened in 1976. And I've been there every winter ever since, except when my current husband had a heart attack and we couldn't get away. But the following year we went, even and though it was shortened, we went. And you're a tour guide down there too, right? is that correct? I do some tour guiding on the whale watching boats because I've spent so much time with the gray whales that I know a lot about them. Oh, how wow. It's great fun. It but, really sounds fabulous. Well, those whales are whales that are friendly, so they often push their babies up to the boat oh. and you get to play with the babies or play with the mothers. How They're is, enormous. How big is a baby whale? <laughs> baby whale is about the size and density of a Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> about 2,000 pounds. Wow. <laughs> and they're cute. They roll over on their sides and they look up at you and they, they look like puppies in some way or another because they have this kind of juvenile sweetness that just makes you want to hug them. They're, it's, an, it's a unique opportunity. It's really quite extraordinary. Wow. Well, you know, let's go back to your artwork because we're going to not get to show them more. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, it's I going fast. We're, we're <laughs> Okay, well this is certainly reminiscent of the Baja. The thing is that I didn't try to paint birds. I let the painting take itself where it wants to take it. And now, then now what's the medium? It's this one is acrylic and uh, some texture. I use glass beads and textured a gel medium called stucco, but it's not stucco. It, they're all in a polymer base. They're artist gel mediums. Is, is it on so canvas or board? It, this one's on paper. Mm -hmm. On paper. And it, this one's fairly small. It's about the size of a postcard, a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. And once I saw that the birds wanted to be there, then I allowed them to develop. I, I did encourage them. But the birds came into the work without my saying, I'm going to sit down and paint a few birds right now. And I work in layers, so sometimes I'll I'll make a base and then the next day I'll go back to it and I'll see what it what comes out of it for me and and allow it to develop itself. So I'll often work on six or seven things at a time. Oh, that's cool. It's almost always more fun too, isn't it? I started out painting t-shirts and when you're working production, you have to actually produce enough that if you're only getting $30 for something, you need to make a lot of them. So <laughs> I learned to paint by working painting wearable art and have now transferred that to paper canvas and still will paint on whatever, whatever I see. I'll oh. paint anything. All right, and your, your studio is where? Uh, my studio is above my house. We, we built an architectural barn, a, a Morton building, and mm -hmm. so that is on Little Noyak Path, and certainly I encourage people to come to the studio if they're interested in seeing the work. And do you have a website too? 
I do, but uh, mostly it's available on Facebook. I have an art page on Facebook. Oh, okay, so, so people find you on Kimberly Facebook. Kimberly Goff's art page, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's easier. The website crashed at one point because Apple gave up their iWeb design program, mm -hmm. and so I have to reestablish the website. So. The Facebook page I maintain. Okay, so so they can find you on Facebook and people can come to your your gallery and, and your studio. And, they and can, in work. fact, and cool. they can reach me on Facebook in order to arrange to come to the oh, to cool. the studio. So l let's look at some more. That we have a few more, right? Yeah, we have four more. Okay. Okay. So this cool. next painting was a transitional piece. Again, it was painted in the Baja. And it's one that allowed me to segue into a whole series that became architectural in, its, in their inspiration. I love the colors. Are, they, are these colors? What these are colors that I often go to. Uh -huh. They're just happy. And they, they are not so intense as to be real tropical colors, but they, it was coming on to, into springtime, and so I started with a new palette. I often have done a lot of black and white paintings. and. For some people, the black and white are just too intense and too dark. Mm -hmm. So this was a, an effort to move on to uh, a lighter mode. Be they were, it's beautiful. It's, <laughs> is there another one? Something else? There's another. Ah. So Ooh. this is in that same series. This was done right after the one that you just saw. And this really does move you into that I was starting to make lines and not streets, but divided into a more geometric, more architectural in its setup. And so it started a series of six large paintings, 30 by 30 inches, that became much more figurative and have much more, more of <coughs> the architect's viewpoint, their buildings, <coughs> pardon. Two of them look like they might have rice patties in them because they've got buildings and then areas that look like they're probably um, uh, agricultural. So I never quite know where the work's going to go, but I allow it to progress and then take inspiration from one painting onto the next. So do you, do you get your, your inspiration from out external stuff? That, Certainly the, the birds and the things that are reminiscent of the sea come from the fact that I'm surrounded by water and aquatic mm -hmm. birds, migratory birds, but a lot of it just comes out of my head. But then the paintings feed each other. They do. They, they, they morph into different kinds of directions based on what you You put understand out. completely. <laughs> <laughs> Could we have more? I think there's still, yes, uh -huh. this one. So this one, you can begin to see barn, a barn. You can begin to see that it's, it's more divided and more geometric and, mm -hmm. and again, going towards architecture. I love the colors. Oh, good. Yeah, they're really just. That's my object. I want you to love my work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this is this one. Now, this is at the Southampton Art Center right now at an exhibition that's there through the 19th, is it? 19th of May. Yeah, I don't know how. Created by Patton Miller. Mm -hmm. It's the fourth year that he's done East, East End Collected, so it's East End Collected 4. I have five paintings in the show, four of which are quite small, and then this one. This one was a part of a series that started last year and has come into this year. So there are about 10 paintings in this series. Oh, wow. And uh, this one is a very happy painting. I called it May Day because it seems to me you could be dancing around the maypole. <laughs> it almost looks like a little bit of a maypole it's got, feeling to it. It's got the it, dance. It's got, it's the, got the timing. It's got it movement be, to it. Yes. Uh, May Day can also be a call for help. Oh. So one of the things that I get to do in Mexico is to translate for the local clinic that's once a month that um, doctors come down from Arizona primarily, although this year I had some California doctors come in. We did cataract surgery on 13 patients. I oh. get to be up close and personal with the medical industry. So wow. I get to do a lot of things in Mexico. It's great fun for well, me. Well, you certainly don't have any downtime, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't look for any downtime. <laughs> but you, now, Besides now, that, I'm a gardener. <laughs> now, now, last year you curated the Children's Museum of the East End, and you're going to do that again this year. There's four shows coming up. The first it's ongoing. One. Uh, they have allowed me to take over a hallway, a classroom, and sometimes to spread out. I've got some sculptures out in the sculpture and where garden. Tell our guests where, the, where this museum is. The museum is on the Bridgehampton Sag Harbor Turnpike. It's directly across from the South Fork Natural History Museum. It is closer to Bridgehampton than it is to Sag Harbor. It's quite easy to find. There's some big sculptures out front by 
um, Eleonora Kupenkow, who will be in the show called Whimsy that opens on May 19th. And then you have four shows after that. We have a show called Creatures Large and Small that was the name of a show at the Elaine Benson Gallery. Oh. That show had a poster by Milton Glaser that was an award-winning poster that's very popular in vets offices around the country. And so I thought it would be fun to bring back that show. And years ago, we used to do a benefit for the Animal Rescue Fund that was concurrent with the, well, that was a preview benefit. All of the shows at the Elaine Benson Gallery had Friday night benefits that raised money for local charities. In fact, my mother established the idea of doing benefits for charities out here. Oh, wow. So she started the plate auction for the retreat. We did the John Steinbeck opening every, the book fair that was the first opening of every season. And we raised money for LTV. We did a, an event called Tapas and Tango. Tapas and Tapas. Tango. <laughs> it was great fun. Fraser Doherty brought I brought the idea, and then Yolanda Merchant, one of the artists whom we were showing, had a relationship with Tito Puente, and Tito Puente and his band came Ooh. out and played a benefit show for, ta for LTV, and then the following year it was Tapas and Tango, and we had uh, Dava Sobel come out, and she actually had fallen in love with her tango instructor, <laughs> and they did an amazing tango at the gallery in the Sculpture Garden. Oh, that's fabulous. Did you we, put down a board or did you, they do it on the grass? I mean, did you I put down a floor for them? Do you remember? I think there was a floor because I remember specifically where they were in front of the back gallery. So I think they had a platform. Yeah, for people who have never been to the Elaine Benson, it was really a phenomenal space that had two separate buildings with a, with a garden area in between where people would, 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 would mill and cluster and, and where, she could, where they could do something like this that would be like a... There was space for hundreds of people to congregate and it was actually pretty amazing to come into Bridgehampton on the nights of benefits or openings at the Elaine Benson Gallery because there would be cars for as far as you could see. And then there was the cleanup. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. It was all good. So uh, you're, you're really active out here in all different kinds of ways. You're on the board of SOFO, is it? Yeah, the South Fork Natural History Museum, as I mentioned, is on the Sag Harbor Turnpike as well. And I've been on that board for many years. I can't even remember how many. And it kind of ties in with the things that I do in Mexico and the things that I do here. And it's a great place. It's a great resource for the community and wonderful for the children because it's all about as education, sustainability, conservation, and respect for nature which are all very wonderful things to do. Key. Yeah, they're... <laughs> Key to the survival of the uh, lifestyle that we live. Right. And the community that which we love. Which we're in danger with what's going on today. It's just so Well, awesome yesterday time. was Earth Day. It was great to see everybody turn out. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. I was at the Cultural Center, no, at the South, Southampton Arts Center, which used to be the Parish Art Museum. And there were many, many people and many activities, many educators. It was really fun. So... Uh, and you know, I'm just going to digress for a minute because your 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 shows at the Children's Museum. What, what when is it? When is the museum open? What are the hours there? The museum is open uh, at this time of year, six days a week. It's closed on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. I just saw the sign. It's nine to five. The hours are extended in the summer, I think till six, and they are open on Tuesdays in the summer as well. So if, if people go to your Facebook page, will they find stuff about this too, or not? I do post some things about it, so how would they find but they out? could go to the CME website, cmee.org, I believe, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that will tell them about the shows, or we announce them in the local papers as well. Mm -hmm. And it's ongoing. There will be shows, there'll be some art to see at CME all summer, at the, at the Children's Museum of the East End. And then we put up a show to, as a sort of placeholder in the winter, so there's always art. So there'll, you, there'll be a final show that will stay all winter it stays, long? Yes. Do you know what that's going to be yet, or are you still working it out? Well, this year it was mostly the Elaine Benson Gallery collection, mm -hmm. and has some of my work and a series of collages. So is that still up there until the that's 19th? That's still up. So when will, it come, when will that come That'll down? That'll come down around the 16th, so I can hang the next show. So I could still get over there, because I didn't see this. I would love Certainly. to see it. Oh, I'd actually. love for you to see it. Yeah, I would it's, love to, too. It's a, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's good to... to be out there. For many years, I was eclipsed by the Elaine Benson Gallery. So maybe we can meet up and do that next week. I'd love to do that. I, cool, that cool. would be great. Cool, super. Yeah, super. I still want to curate. I still want to 
be able to, to give some benefit to the other artists in the community, but it's very important to me to also show my work at this stage of things. Mm -hmm. Because for years, people would say to me, you mean you're an artist? And <laughs> you know, I was working all the time, so it, it, it was a little frustrating. Yeah, I think for a long time I didn't know that you were an artist. I mean, I don't know how long we know each other. Do you have any idea? But it's quite some time. Right? More than 20 years. <laughs> it's, it's a good long while. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Yeah, and I don't remember when I discovered, you know, at, at this point it's kind of, I know you as an artist, but I don't remember, I know initially I didn't think of you as an artist. It was later well, on I learned. People associated me with the boutique, so mm -hmm. that was something that, you know, they had me as a shopkeep, they had me as a Bridgehampton merchant, but I always painted on the clothing. So we, paint, we painted you still hats, do that? we painted shoes, less, because I'm too busy painting on canvas. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you've got a book in you, a history of this art scene out here and your mother. I've been wanting to do a book as a tribute to my mother, and at one point I had a lot of people send me information, recollections, even Dan Retiner, who we, she had worked with. You know, Mom did a column for Dan's papers for 30 years called Elaine K.G. Benson, her column, that dealt with all I kinds of it. local... <laughs> You know, it dealt with the bees hive in the tree, it dealt with the dress code on Southampton streets, it dealt with the difference between what you wear in Southampton or, as opposed to what you wear in East Hampton. That in East Hampton, I think you don't wear socks, and in Southampton, <laughs> you wear those funny colored pants with tennis rackets or frogs on them. She was very funny and very clever. Your mother was a real character. She was a lovely lady. She's I liked great. her very much. <laughs> and I wrote the column for a year just trying to keep the tone of my mother's voice. It was called Elaine K.G. Benson, her daughter's column. And so I'm still very much in respect for and, and trying to move on the, the legacy of my mother's world. So one thing that came up in the last few weeks is that someone, a dear friend, whose husband had shown with the gallery and who, ah, who's going to show it, see me with me, suggested that we try to establish a not-for-profit, the Elaine Benson Gallery Legacy Foundation. And that would be to support many of the artists whom we knew and worked with in the past, to work on the archives, to make those available to people. One of the things that my mother did here at LTV was interviews with artists. Oh, and there's yes. a, a large archive of footage that she has. She also, oh, not she, but Fraser Dougherty, who started LTV with his late wife, uh, Fra um, Francis Ann Dougherty, filmed almost every benefit and opening at the Elaine Benson Gallery for many, many years. So once we get... Where the, is all that stuff? That's oh. here at LTV. That's here too, the stuff that he, f he filmed? So we're going to try to make a collaboration between LTV and the new foundation, make sure that this footage is available to people, that I can... I'm not exactly sure what the process will be. I know we'll need a board of directors. I know that we'll need to do some fundraisers. So it's just in the initial stages. I've just got the first meeting under my belt where I need to write up the minutes and then it can start being sent out to people to see if they're interested in coming aboard. Oh, getting the involved. Dynamite project. Oh, good luck it's with it. It's a big one. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a really big one. It'll keep you busy a for a long staggering. time. <laughs> yes, but I want this to, to go on past my lifetime. I don't oh, want this to all be dependent on me. Mm -hmm. So the idea of establishing a board and allowing it to have a life of its own is very specific so that the legacy does not end here because I've become too important to it. I own the archives. Because you're kind of like I, the keeper of the flame at this point? Yeah. And I'd like there to be more keepers of the flame. I'd mm -hmm. like Elaine Benson's name to be more known. I'd like to move forward a book. I'd like to archive. I, I've archived a lot of the material in that I have it in cardboard boxes. I've saved it. It is in climate control. But now it needs to be scanned. I need a scanning house. There are probably 10,000 pieces of paper that wow. need to be scanned. And mm -hmm. then it needs to go online. So it's a huge job. Well, I, I wish you luck with it. And I, <laughs> Thank and you, Patrick. It's, it's, it's real, it's really, I'll pull you in. <laughs> I'll be glad to help. Anything I be, can do, do, tag me, for sure. I will. But we, you know, we're running out of time, and I also wanted to talk just really briefly. You're a fellow at the Watermill Center, too, which is one of our wonderful places out here. What, do you, what does that mean as a fellow? What do you do? I know you're there all the time with all the galas. <laughs> I see you quite frequently when, I, when I'm there. 
we try, all of the fellows try to be involved on, on an active basis of being, uh, being at the open rehearsals, being involved in the summer program, showing up. Bob ha pulled me in right after my mother died. My mother adored him. She and he had a great rapport. When she died, he knew that I was going to be hanging loose in the wind, and so he pulled me onto what was then the community board. We've then now morphed into being community fellows, and we are there to be a liaison between the community and Bob and his work. Oh, how lovely. How, how many, th wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job. <laughs> it's a good job if you can get it. So, so is there anything else that's, that we don't know about that's on the horizon for you? The, the just staying involved in the community. I try to go to as many art openings as I can. I was a freelance photographer for Dan's Papers for 23 years. I've worked with Hampton's Party Girl and with the Art Hub. So I often go and shoot photos as an event photographer for different charities. And so I hope the community comes out and helps support our local organizations. Oh, you could also, I never really, you could shoot some stuff for us occasionally, too. You know, for I would love to. I'd love to. I'd love to have you do that. I'd be very so, happy to. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> I, it, it was a delight, and I hope our guests were, uh, our viewers were as intrigued as I was in the history of your thank evolution, you. because I, I didn't, I didn't, I learned stuff today. Well, it's like Pachaka Cha. You, you know, you go and you hear <laughs> six minutes of somebody and you learn things. You've known them for 30 years. You learn things you never knew. So I hope this helps people. I, I hope so, too. And I hope a lot of people will come around and see your, uh, see your show at the Children's Museum. Your the Children's shows. Museum's exciting. We had a show last year called Hampton's Artists um, Part One. Uh, there will be Part Two. It had over 40 artists in the show, just one small painting of each. But this is a way to give people exposure to the artists of the Hamptons. And the first show is May 19th. So called Whimsy. Uh, called Whimsy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> We're out of time. <laughs>